know. You don't think it's going to be on there? No. No? You think I'm weak or f of x y? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. Our arc. 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 No, I already printed it. Arc. No, I didn't print it, but yeah. It's already made. I don't want to change it. Arc, arc cosine of x plus y. The domain is minus 1 and 1. Is it? Okay, I have to think about it. Let's see. It's inverse of trig. Yes, yeah, inverse trig. So let, me, let me think about it. If domain and range. I give you a minute to write it down, then we'll, then we'll work it out. So domain and range. So it's one of the baby steps here, right? So let's just, just up here, just, let's just think. So, so that's, that's like your z, right? That's in the range. So z is equal to the arc cosine of x plus y, right? So the arc cosine takes x plus y and sends it to z. So the cosine function takes z and sends it back to x plus y, right? That's how it works. They're inverse functions. They do each other. Again, this is the inverse cosine. It takes x plus y and sends it to z. So the cosine function takes z and sends it back to x plus y. Do you all remember that from math? Like they undo each other. Uh, okay, so, so you know cosine is a wave function. And it's trapped between what two numbers? Minus one, and one. minus one and one. Very good. So this is between minus one and one. Oh, but wait, look, that's part of the domain, mm -hmm. right? So the domain is all of the x's and y's. It's a beautiful question. Oh, but is minus one is less than or equal to x plus y, and x plus y is less than or equal to one. Right. Good. So x plus y is between. That's exactly right. It's between negative one and one. Beautiful. I've never done this problem before, but I looked at it when I assigned it, I thought, oh, this is cool. It's kind of fun to do it. Yeah, that worked out. So, so again, if you just think about this, say cosine uh, is bounded, that's a fancy word, right, between negative 1 and 1. So x plus y is between negative 1 and 1. Um, this one takes a little bit more work. This you have to dig deep. Um, the range of our cosine, you remember what it was? 0 to pi. 0 to pi. So that's just from memory. That's just knowledge, okay? How do you know that? Um, when, you're, when, when people create inverse functions, this is the cosine function, like that, with something like that, right? When you're creating the inverse functions, the inverse cosine function, uh, they have to have inverse. That means they have to pass the horizontal line test. So if I draw a horizontal line, it crosses an infinite many times. So the cosine function doesn't have an inverse. It doesn't, right? So what people do is they restrict the cosine function, right? They say, okay, I'm going to look at cosine from here to here. So from 0 to pi, just this piece here, it passes the horizontal line test. This is the domain of cosine, right, where it passes the horizontal line test. So on this domain, cosine has an inverse. But remember, a function and its inverse swap domain and range. So the domain of cosine becomes the range of arc cosine. So how do I memorize it? I just know what the graph looks like, and I think, where would it be one to one? Where is it going to have an inverse? Right there. Oh, that's going to be the range of the inverse. You do 